Hello, I'm Joe Galvin, Chief Research Officer for Vistage Worldwide. Welcome to the Vistage CEO Coaching Spotlight, a video series dedicated to exploring the challenges and opportunities facing CEOs and leaders around the globe. In each episode, we'll be speaking with some of the world's best and brightest executive coaches, seasoned mentors who are on their daily leadership climb with business leaders every day, guiding them to make better decisions and become even more effective leaders. Today, we're speaking with Vistage Chair Margaret Morrison about the challenges faced by SMB CEOs today, and more importantly, what they're doing about it. Margaret chairs a Vistage CEO group in New York City, area working directly with over a dozen CEOs. She has over 35 years leading large teams and helping business leaders address the chaos and complexities that come with scaling their business. Welcome, Margaret. It's a pleasure to have you with us on the CEO Coaching Spotlight. Thank you, Joe. And it's so nice to see you again. You as well. Yeah. Uh, Margaret, tell us a little bit about your climb. Uh, more importantly, as you, in your career, as you've had all these interesting jobs, what are some of the most significant leadership learnings that you've had? So my leadership climb really accelerated during my 25 years at Ernst & Young, where I helped scale one of their businesses from $280 million to $5 billion over 17 years. I was responsible for top-line growth and the demand side of the business. We climbed that mountain through the financial crisis, an unprecedented challenging time for our clients who are financial services and for our business. And climbing got really tough through 9-11, which impacted our clients and employees on such a personal level. What did you learn in those two experiences? You know, it's, it's about staying focused and um, pivoting. I mean, you've got to step back and you've got to think about, you know, what's changed and how to address your clients' needs, how that's going to impact your strategy, um, and then stay focused on executing. Well, you're, you've experienced a lot in terms of what you've done in your own career, but now that you're a Vistage Chair and you work directly with CEOs, uh, what is it that they're talking about now? What's top of mind to, to CEOs in the small and mid-sized business space as we sit here uh, today? Yeah. So, you know, Joe, it's an interesting time to be a leader. First navigating through the pandemic and now the marketplace and business environment has changed significantly. So unprecedented times with no real playbook to leverage and so much still uncertainty ahead. You know, what I'm seeing from my members is this delicate balance between needing to perform today and transform for the future. How best to bulletproof their businesses so they can weather through other challenges ahead. There's a lot more focus on how best to scale their business, especially with challenges that they've had recruiting, retaining talent, and with the supply chain. Although those have improved, but now there's a lot of uncertainty with the economy. So, you know, there, it feels like there's a real undercurrent of how do I grow through this, through this volatility, through this chaos. Our own data is three times more volatile the last two years than the prior 10. So what are some of the things you're seeing CEOs do to either continue to build and drive growth or to prepare for growth as, as things begin to settle down a little bit, which they'll have to? Yeah, it's such a good question. So there's probably three things. You know, a big focus and no surprise is really creating that high performing culture, the foundation to any business. And that's really about aligning the client experience, branding, the employee experience and culture and leadership, how you and your leaders lead. The second is really from a growth perspective and the two areas I would highlight, uh, several of the leaders in my group are revisiting their five-year plan. What's that vision? And getting clarity on the market alignment because it's not business as usual. They're re-looking at their client needs and expectations. They're re-looking at their own competencies and processes. And they're re-looking re at their competitive landscape. A great example of this is one of my members' competitors no longer provides the same service level for certain clients and has scaled back a number of their products. So this gap in the market provides a great opportunity for them. So they're now reevaluating you know, who they should be targeting and who they want their clients to be. The second area under growth is really, it's kind of a big category, but it's clarity, execution, and accountability. So once they get clarity on that vision that I just mentioned, leaders are now looking to paint that picture. So everyone in the organization understands if they were to be successful in five years, what does that look like? And then it's about defining each person's role in getting there and buttoning up accountability. One member who is planning an event in five or six years knows what he wants that revenue to be in five or six years, but he needs to complete the picture 
of what the rest of the organization is going to look like. And only then can he step back and say, okay, what are the needs? What are the competence, comp competencies need to support that targeted growth? And then determine in more detail the metrics, the KPIs, and a robust execution plan. Well, you know, it's interesting you mentioned the customers. Now, customers have changed. We saw a year ago this time that 78% of customers buying behavior had changed as a result of the pandemic. And then most recently, 43% as a result of inflation. And yet you describe these, these remarkable stories of how, of how leaders are repositioning or, 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 or positioning their organization to capitalize on these gaps in the markets. Do you see this is going to continue? And where else can people exploit some of that? I do think it's going to continue. I I think the environment is just different. Um, and and it, it's not a bad thing. I mean, you know, change is uncomfortable, but I think it is an opportunity to step back and say, are we doing the right things? Could we be doing something differently? Are there new markets we should be getting in? So I do look at it that it's a big opportunity and it's something they need to continue to evaluate and question. Well, there's no question that change is occurring uh, more rapidly and more at, at, at greater levels of, of change than we've ever experienced. There's no reason to believe that's going to let up. With that in mind, what do you think CEOs need to be thinking about right now? Beyond, I know we're all focused on hiring and retention. That's still a critical battle. Inflation is just not given up. Supply chains, healing, and, and, and. Uh, what do you think they should be thinking about now? So for me, there's just some foundational things. It's embedding that strong culture and purpose as the foundation in their business. There's so much research, and you know this better than anyone, and thought leadership around the value and results of a purpose-driven organization. People want to work for an organization that aligns to their values. Yeah. Next, create and articulate a clear vision on where they're going and how they're going to get there and stay laser-focused on executing against that. And then finally, Within the context of the vision, continue to question everything. Ask your employees quarterly, ask your clients, what's working? What should we stop doing and what should we start doing? Well, we know that times of change and volatility usually and typically represent great growth opportunities for those that are capable of seeing it and confident enough to, uh, to go out and grab it. So, uh, Margaret, thank you so much for your insights. You're, you're spot on and you, you clearly have not just your, your sense of the heartbeat, but the pulse rate and blood pressure of what these leaders are working on. Uh, any final th thoughts before us before we, uh, before we go? Well, Joe, you know, I'm an optimist and it continues to be a time of change, but with change comes opportunity opportunity to pivot, to provide new services, service new clients, become more effective, more efficient, and a time of change presents a huge opportunity to lead. A quote I love from JFK is, change is the law of life, and those who look only to the past or present are certain to miss the future. Well, there's no question our future is coming up on us quick, and, and your members are lucky to have you for guidance. I look forward to talking to you again. And I thank everyone here for listening to and watching the Vistage CEO Coaching Spotlight. If you enjoyed this talk, be sure to share it with colleagues who you think will find it valuable. For more information and guidance on the top issues you're facing as a leader, visit www.vistage.com. Margaret, thank you so much. Thank you.